Hello everyone, welcome back to Planet Linux. Today we'll be taking a look at Linux Lite, specifically version 5.8. And while as far as you're concerned this is the first time talking about this, it's now the second for me because I forgot to unmute my microphone the first time. Putting that aside, the goal of Linux Lite is to be a Linux distribution that is both lightweight and user-friendly. And that's a hard balance to find. Uh, the more lightweight and able to run on older or lower end machines that you want something to be, typically the more features you have to strip out, potentially hurting the usability of it. And yet Linux Lite has really managed to strike a balance of this, and I'll show you exactly how in a moment, but before doing that, I want to point out I am currently running this in a virtual machine with one gigabyte of memory. And as you can see here, on first boot, it is using just over 500 megabytes of memory. That is incredibly low for a modern operating system. And normally you'd expect to have to make a lot of sacrifices in the usability department to maintain that. But as you'll see throughout this video, this actually runs surprisingly well for basic computing tasks, even with such little memory. So keep that in mind as we continue throughout this. And regarding the usability of it, there is very little sacrificed here in Linux Lite. For example, when you first boot it up, you'll be greeted with this welcome screen. This includes a lot of common utilities and features that you may wish to set up out of the box, such as installing system updates, uh, installing additional drivers, setting a restore point, installing additional language packages, and selecting whether you want to use a light or a dark theme. We'll take a look at a lot of these utilities that are included in a moment. But it also includes a lot of support options here. You can go to their online support forums, online support documentation. You can open up their help manual, which I will take a look at here right now because this is incredibly useful. They've created a custom manual that is a little too large here at the moment. Uh, with categories for all of the different utilities and tasks that you may wish to do on your computer. And these are incredibly helpful. Things from how to install the system, to installing software, uh, setting up your network, printers, uh, user accounts, pretty much everything you would want to do right after an ad, they gotta make money somehow. Uh, pretty much everything you want to do is documented incredibly well here. This is a custom manual that they've built specifically for Linux Lite, and they update it with every release to make sure it always has the latest features. So I definitely recommend checking this out. Even if you're someone that's fairly familiar with Linux, a lot of effort has gone into this. It's very nice and you could learn something from it. You've also got access to their forums as well as a hardware database that uh, shows all of the different computers and various pieces of hardware that Linux Lite works with. And finally on the welcome screen here, we have ways to contribute to the project. And as you'll see here throughout the video, it definitely deserves to get a contribution if you're able to do so. What we'll do here first is notice just how familiar the overall interface is. Uh, part of the goal with Linux Lite is to be familiar to both existing Linux users as well as individuals coming from other operating systems. So they've taken a very Windows-like approach here with desktop icons and a panel along the bottom that has your main application launcher, some quick launch icons for applications you use the most, your open applications, and your system tray with indicators and the time and date. We'll take a look at some of the default applications now. First off, under favorites, we have install updates, which is their custom uh, update utility called light updates. And this is a simple little utility that is meant to be a lightweight solution to install application updates. And honestly, I prefer it over the typical Ubuntu updater that we seem to have in every other Ubuntu-based distribution. Uh, currently, there's nothing here. It's up to date. But it's a simple little utility to install updates. And we also have the help manual that we were just in. Under my computer here, we have frequent locations on the system. And settings contains most of our system settings here if we don't want to have to go into the settings application itself. 
We'll get back to these in a moment as there's something I want to mention here, but we'll look at the rest of our applications first. Accessories has most of what you'd come to expect, such as your archive manager for extracting files, uh, a backup utility for creating backups of your personal files and restoring from them. Got a calculator, file search, which this is incredibly nice. Besides just being able to go in here and search wherever you want for files, it's also baked directly into the system. So if you're browsing for files somewhere, for example, in your music folder, you can right click from any folder that you're in and choose search here and it will open up the file search utility in the folder that you are currently in so that you can search from there immediately. We have a fonts viewer, a screenshot utility, text editor, and a USB formatter and writer for flashing images to a USB drive. Under games, uh, none of these came installed by default, I installed these uh, through a utility that I'll show you in a moment. For graphics, we have a document scanning utility, an image editor, this is GIMP, a paint utility, and photo manager, which is the Shotwell photo manager. Under internet, we have our usual suspects, Thunderbird for email, uh, network connection settings, uh, link to online support for Linux Lite, the Firefox web browser, and again, I installed Steam earlier. Multimedia, we have a CD and DVD image burner, we have the VLC media player, and a shortcut to our volume control settings. Under Office, we have the main parts of the LibreOffice suite, the three most popular applications here, and a PDF viewer. And under System, we have our package manager, this is the Synaptic package manager, uh, we have Gparted for partitioning our disks, printer settings, a process viewer, system information, system logs, a system restore utility, this uses time shift, uh, task manager, and our terminal. Now you'll notice that these, you'll notice that this menu is showing the generic task names of the programs as opposed to their actual names. For example, it's called the text editor instead of, I believe this is mousepad. And the reason for this is intentional, as users coming over to Linux from other operating systems may not be familiar with the specific names of these Linux applications. So it's a lot easier to recognize what the text editor is, as opposed to wondering what mousepad is. But either will work when you search here. So when you're searching for a program, you can either type text editor, and it will come up, or you could search for it by name, mousepad, and it still shows up here. So it's incredibly useful, and you can change this in the properties for the menu. Under show generic application names, you could disable that, and it will show the actual names of each application. Now in our menu here, you'll notice that there are a lot of light applications. For example, light desktop, light software, light sounds, etc. These are custom utilities designed specifically for Linux Lite, and they're meant to fill in the gaps of features that may be missing or hard to find in a standard XFCE environment. For example, in the past it's been very difficult to find sound settings in XFCE, they're just kind of not in the system settings. So they've included a utility here called Light Sounds. As you can see, it shows up in the system settings where you would expect it to. And it's a small little utility to enable or disable the system sounds, as well as open up the volume control for your input and output. And that's really the story here of a lot of these light utilities. For example, auto login, something that has historically been kind of difficult to set in XFCE. So they've created a little graphical utility here in the settings to do just that. But while we're here, one very important one is Light Software. This is a utility that curates the most common pieces of Linux software that a user may wish to install. Yep, we'll have it up. We'll have it update the cache. 
And if we choose to install software here, we'll see it pulls together a list of many common applications that you may wish to use. And these are pulled from all sorts of different repositories and sources, uh, so you don't have to worry about some of these packages normally being really hard to find. We've got a lot of common ones that you may be familiar with on Linux, like Audacity and FileZilla, uh, Kodi, but also some others that typically may not be in a lot of repositories, such as the Microsoft Edge browser, or Dropbox, uh, Etcher, even things like Skype and Zoom are in here. So this is a great catalog of many of the most common applications someone may wish to install on Linux, and is really the first point that anyone should go to try and find their software. This is also where I installed Steam from, as well as the games pack that included some of those other games, such as Solitaire and Minesweeper. Now, for any other software you're looking to install, of course, if you ever find any deb files on the internet, you can install those, but the main package manager that this uses is Synaptic. And this is maybe my one criticism of Linux Lite. I'm not sure that Synaptic Package Manager is really the best choice here. I suspect they included this over most others because it's more lightweight. But this isn't exactly the most user-friendly experience for someone that doesn't know what they're looking for. Uh, it's certainly usable. You can find the programs you're looking for in here. You know, it does its job well, but it doesn't exactly look good while it's doing it. And I wouldn't normally mind this, but with so much effort going into making this system as usable as possible, despite being very lightweight, uh, this does seem like a bit of a shortcoming. I'm not entirely sure what you would replace it with. Many of the others out there that do look nicer um, do require more resources, but uh, perhaps the Linux Mint software manager, um, perhaps there are other options. I just feel like Synaptic isn't the most visually appealing and user-friendly choice. That said, it's a small gripe, and again, it is usable, Plus, most of the software that users will install, particularly new users just coming to Linux, is probably already in the Lite software application. And as you can see here, we're still chugging along, only using uh, about half of our available one gigabyte of memory. And I do want to uh, open up Firefox here real quick and attempt to go to YouTube. Um, just because... We should not be able to do that on something with this few of resources, but as you'll see, it actually works fairly well. We'll just pick a random video here, and yeah, make sure that's muted, don't need a copyright strike. And you know, we're, we're dropping a few frames here and there. Uh, it's not perfectly smooth, but it's pretty close. Uh, and the fact that this is all working so well on just one gigabyte of RAM is really impressive. Now, this virtual machine does have a better CPU in it than most computers of the time actually would. Uh, so your, your mileage will probably vary as to how well this runs, but just the fact that this is possible on a system with such few resources is a true testament to just how efficient Linux Lite is in uh, providing a good user experience that gets out of the way and allows the applications plenty of remaining memory to use. And finally here, we'll go to the release announcements for this latest version of Linux Lite. Um, it, does sub up, it does sum up the latest features in this release, uh, such as improved theming and icons, a few new wallpapers here. Uh, they've included NeoFetch as a system information utility, updates to the Linux Lite widget, and they included the MintStick USB image writer here. But the main reason I'm here is to point out that Linux Lite is still in very active constant development. They come out with new releases roughly every five months. And as we can see here at the bottom, version 6 is well on its way, expected to come out in June of 2022. And as you can see, they're planning on it bringing a new theme for the window manager, a new method of bringing in updates to LibreOffice. Perhaps this means more frequent updates, or just a different repository or type of package. Uh, they're considering switching to a different default web browser here in the 
days of controversy surrounding Firefox, and perhaps some more accessibility tools, uh, a lot of active development going here. So if this is a project that you're interested in and you appreciate, they are asking for tips when you download it. Uh, of course, you don't have to, but if you're able to, it is certainly recommended on my part, as um, they really do deserve it. You can either do it when you download, or of course they have the options to contribute uh, here on the Linux Lite welcome screen. So if you are interested in the project and able to do so, I'm sure they would greatly appreciate that. And certainly, I think it is worth it, as the overall experience here has been really amazing. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, Linux Lite has done a fantastic job of combining usability here with a familiar and functional desktop environment with something that's incredibly lightweight. I mean, just a testament to it, the fact that this whole video has been done on one gigabyte of RAM. So... This has been a fantastic experience, and it's one that I hope continues to be developed in the future and that we can all show our support for. And speaking of showing support, if you've enjoyed this video, I ask that you give it a thumbs up. It helps me know what you do and don't like seeing. If there's any feedback you'd like to give, feel free to post it in the comments section. And if you want to stay up to date with the latest news and content, I ask that you consider subscribing to the channel and following me on Twitter at PlanetLinux98. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you next time.